Sydney's commitment to seeing the gospel spread and the local church built up through the faithful gospel-centred ministry of godly, equipped leaders is not a new thing. We can think of CMS sending Sydney Anglicans around the world for a century and things like Sydney's support of Reach South Africa, formerly the Church of England in South Africa, through decades when those brothers and sisters were isolated from the global Anglican family, but encouraged and supported by successive Archbishops of Sydney. Uh, this included sending key leaders like Bishop Stephen Bradley in the 1950s, Bishop Dudley Ford in the 1980s, and Broughton Knox in his retirement went to Cape Town to establish George Whitfield College before being succeeded by David Seckham. George Whitfield is now one of the leading evangelical theological colleges in Africa and draws students from across the continent and from many denominations. Sydney Diocese and Moore College continue to strengthen gospel ministry in Africa through partnership with George Whitfield College, including offering visiting faculty. In 1998, it was the Archbishop of Sydney, Harry Goodhue, who chaired the Sexuality Commission as part of that year's Lambeth Conference. Under Archbishop Goodhue's leadership, that group produced the wording of Lambeth Resolution 1.10 on human sexuality, which has become the benchmark of the biblical and Anglican understanding of marriage and sexuality. 10 years later, GAFCON was established to foster global fellowship amongst Anglicans, united by common commitment to our biblical and historic convictions, to the Lord Jesus as revealed in the gospel, the primacy and sufficiency of his word, and the urgency of gospel proclamation to every nation for the salvation of souls and the building of God's church in the face of tides of liberalism, religious extremism, and the challenges of poverty, war, and epidemic. As you know, Sydney's Archbishop at that time was Peter Jensen. He was appointed General Secretary and exercised an extraordinary ministry in encouraging gospel faithfulness and gospel fruitfulness across the Anglican communion. And I think it's right to say that as Peter served the global Anglican family in this way, the Diocese of Sydney has been greatly enriched by its fellowship with courageous, enterprising and joyful Anglican brothers and sisters across Gafgon and the Global South. And what I'm saying is, gospel generosity on the part of Sydney Diocese requires not only vision and leadership as we've see, seen in successive archbishops and principals of our key institutions like Moore College and CMS, but also a rich pool from which to draw. You can only share what you've got. Our brothers and sisters from Africa and Asia and Latin America teach us that in spades. Our rich heritage and God's present kindness to us are an impetus to us to invest in training, to pray for the Lord to raise up workers and to keep an eye out for those whom God is raising up in answer to our prayers, to give generously to our training colleges. A strong Sydney can resource the Global Anglican Fellowship. In 2018 in Jerusalem, almost 2000 Anglican bishops, clergy and lay people met together from 50 nations. And out of that thrilling week came the announcement of the establishment of 10 global ministry networks. Many of those networks include members of Sydney Diocese. Craig Roberts leads the Global Youth Network. Phil Wheeler is part of the Global Church Planting Network. Peter Jensen leads the Theological Education Network. Robert Tong leads the Canon Lawyers Network. Daniel Willis is Operations Manager for Gafgon Global and our own Archbishop Glenn Davies is Regional Secretary for Australia and the Pacific. Beyond these formal roles, numerous Sydney Anglicans have fostered mutually encouraging partnerships in ministry beyond Sydney. Uh, others will speak about CMS. We could mention FIEC, AFES, City Bible Forum, and the export of clergy to other dioceses in Australia, of whom I'm one. And this is nothing about the more college graduates uh, involved in theological education as lecturers and principals around Australia and further afield. In my own experience serving in a local church in Perth for nearly 17 years, it was hugely encouraging to faithful brothers and sisters in WA to be joined by more college graduates as co-workers, some in Anglican churches, some serving in parachurch or local church ministry in other denominations, uh, some as uni workers with AFES, believe me, I could go on. It does seem to me to be remarkable 
that Sydney has been able to serve the gospel outside its own borders over a long period, and in some senses, increasingly so. Humanly speaking, what does it take? A strong Sydney. Vital, vibrant, prayerful and generous local churches where Christians are helped and challenged to live their whole lives for the sake of Christ and his gospel. Wisdom and prayer as some men and women are sent to be formally trained and set aside for dedicated Bible teaching ministries. Training colleges committed to deep study of scripture, the cultivation of those who can think theologically and bring truth to bear in the lives of God's people. How I thank God for more college and youth works as well and a common commitment to partnership in the gospel that is prayerful, outward, generous and sacrificial. The blessing we enjoy in Sydney as a legacy from those who came before us and the careful oversight of those who lead us, including especially local church leaders, means we ought to expect that the Lord who has blessed us will seek an account. What have we done? with all that he's entrusted to us. A strong Sydney under God will not only see the church built in Sydney, but across the nation and the world as we pursue partnerships with others in the service of the Lord who loved us and gave himself for us.